So for the past year, the iPad mini, and now specifically the Refresh A17 Pro model, has been one of my must-have go-to devices for organizing my complicated work and home life. And the one app that ties this effort all together is Notion. Although I don't have the most advanced setup or I'm not the most advanced user of this app, I literally cannot live without it. I also have it installed on my iPhone and Mac, which sync up automatically. So in this video, I wanna show you how I use this app with my iPad mini and other devices and demo some of Notion's really exciting new AI features that bring this experience to a whole new level of useful. So again, my setup isn't super crazy, but it makes sense of the endless tasks I have to do around the house, errands I have to run, people I need to see, and the nuanced multi-part tasks related to my work. My personal Notion setup consists of two calendars and a whole bunch of pages that are formatted as to-do lists. I have one calendar labeled as my content schedule where I can visualize and modify post dates for YouTube videos and other content that I'm posting in a given week or month. I also have a similar setup for my life tasks and events so I don't forget appointments and other obligations. As for my to-do list pages, I have lists for grocery items, things I need to sell, and a few that I'm planning on using in the future for better planning. But the primary ones I reference and update are my weekly work objectives, life slash miscellaneous objectives, and my content shot lists, particularly my FV or full video shot lists. Without filling these in, my life would absolutely dissolve into chaos, and I know this because I have definitely learned the hard way. If we look closer at my work objectives page, each day I have these objectives or tasks divided into four general content creator-centric categories. The first is P slash P slash D slash C, which stands for prep, plan, do, or complete. Here I input tasks like project outlining, ideation, creating ordered shot lists, reviewing and signing contracts, creating concepts for brands, and more. The second category is simply write, which is where I obviously input tasks like writing scripts for full videos, like YouTube videos, short form content, and promotional brand related stuff. The third category is S slash R slash C, which stands for shoot, record, or capture. This is where I input tasks involving taking photos, especially for thumbnails, recording footage like A-roll, which is what I'm doing right now, and B-roll or product footage along with screenshots, screen recordings, and other media to edit into a video later on. Finally, the fourth category is simply edit, which is where I obviously input tasks involving editing full videos or YouTube videos, short form content, thumbnails, and other compositions. Oh, and just a little aside that I want to add after the fact, I worked on this video mostly last week, so things have changed a bit since then. Um, my weekly to-do list or objectives page works well when work is an absolutely insane, uh, which is where I'm at right now. I have so many videos I have to make this month, so in November, that I had to create a page with four to five tables to precisely spread out the mountain of tasks I have to do in November so I don't fall behind. So if I make another Notion video, I will definitely dig into this new strategy too. But again, in more ordinary time, you know, not Q3 or Q4 for me, the vertical to-do list objectives page uh, works pretty well when things aren't super hectic and I can sort of afford to, you know, sort of figure things out as I go a little more. To summarize, all of this task and event information lives in my Notion pages where I can easily reference, edit, and add to them at any time on any one of my Apple devices, especially my iPad mini 7th gen, which is what I pretty much always use in real time to keep track of what footage I need to shoot for my YouTube videos. But another way I use the iPad mini with Notion is when I input all of my tasks on designated whiteboards so I can break tasks down further. These whiteboards are physical extensions or manifestations of my Notion organization or pages. This way I can better visualize and immediately reference my dozens of individual weekly tasks in order to create dynamic optimized task lists on a given day without getting too overwhelmed, which is a constant struggle for someone with ADHD like me. With Notion open on my iPad mini, I simply just scroll through my work objectives, life and miscellaneous lists, and more to create little individual checkbox task modules on my largest whiteboard. I place these listed tasks in one of six categories, the first four I mentioned earlier in my work objectives, Notion, page, or list, and my others that relate to life, chores, errands, seeing people, and future goals. This creates a sort of grid of tasks that I can again immediately reference if I look to my right, which I then use to create a tailored, rough ordered task list of what my day should look like. If I don't do this, I don't do much of anything at all. That's the beauty of ADHD. Without a fire lit under my behind, internalized prioritization, executive function, or simply choosing what to do next or start with without a prior plan is just really difficult for me. But if I'm able to see my tasks spread out like this and broken down further on a designated daily agenda whiteboard like I have here, I can actually manage to get 100 plus percent more done opposed to when I just wing it, which I did for years and I really don't recommend it. 
Again, this breakthrough in my productivity and organization is thanks to a simple setup of whiteboards, lots of trial and error, blood, sweat, and tears over the past year or so, and most importantly, my use of Notion. So yeah, that's how I use Notion personally, but there are plenty of other ways to take advantage of your pages with far more complex setups and dashboards, etc. That's what makes Notion so great. You can build it from the ground up to fit your needs like I have here. Regardless of how you set up your Notion though, they're now adding AI related features which make your experience even better. More recently, I've begun to lean into ChatGPT and Apple's AI features, so I'm stoked to start using Notion AI features as well to streamline my organization and productivity even more. First up, Notion AI's assistant lives in or can be toggled by tapping or clicking this cute little face animation in the bottom right corner of the app. It shows up or can be toggled in other places in the UI as well. For starters, you can chat with it about anything since it uses large language models like Cloud and GPT-4. I personally love GPT-4 by itself, so the fact that it's integrated into this interface here is phenomenal. You can also have it analyze files like PDFs and images, which can save you so much time. Notion AI is also capable of generating a document in your own writing style or editing writing according to a style guide or feedback page. Another sick feature or aspect is that you can choose a knowledge source or given app like Word, Evernote, and other workspaces to have Notion AI draw upon for info to better answer your questions or complete tasks. And last up, if you're a Slack or Google Drive user, you're in luck because you can connect them with Notion AI to inform you about deadlines, key messages, project updates, and more without having to leave the Notion app, which can save you time. But how do I personally integrate Notion AI into my proprietary creator workflow? Well, thanks to its use of LLMs, I can ask it general questions about SEO and other YouTube analytical advice without having to open up ChatGPT or other apps. I can also use the file analysis to quickly go through pesky contracts, which I never ever want to read, to make sure they don't include clauses I don't like. This is a huge time and headache saver in my book. As for the writing related functions, I can use Notion AI to edit a script or important email I've written to a brand and make suggested changes to further polish or simplify things or catch mistakes. I can also ask it to compose an email or message in my style of writing in a pinch when I don't have time to sit and write one out, which is super nice. Best of all though, I can ask Notion AI to brief me on what I should be doing in a given day or on a given day based on information I input into my work and life objectives. I can even ask it to help me prioritize which tasks to complete first, which is so cool and underrated. It's like having your own personal little secretary, which is great because again, I'm constantly overwhelmed because of ADHD. So it's nice to have someone or something to suggest what to do next because I certainly have a hard time deciding for myself. And one more quick post-production aside, remember that crazy November tables page that I showed you earlier so I can keep up with the work that I have this month? Well, I used Notion AI to generate that table. All I had to do was copy and paste it a bunch and then tweak it to my liking. But regardless, it was super helpful to just ask Notion AI to just create a table with the specifications that I wanted and it just did it. But anyway, as I detailed earlier, Notion was already super useful for me while I attempt to keep my work and life together in app and tangibly with dry erase markers. I literally could not live without it and its convenience, and I'm thrilled it's been supercharged with built-in AI features that are actually useful, whether you work from home or in a more traditional company environment. Notion is free to use and the AI is free to try, so I'll leave a link to Notion down below if you're interested in checking it out. And that about wraps things up here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Thanks again to Notion for sponsoring this video and expect more content about iPad mini 7th generation from me along with new M4 Mac content coming once they're out and I have my hands on the new models. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.